Hey everybody, it's Shannon. Given recent events and a lot more people staying indoors, taking online courses, watching YouTube, by the way, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I've been getting more requests for English lessons through our website, but something I didn't expect is more and more requests from people who want to learn Arabic. And some of the requests are from people who like don't know any Arabic, they want to learn from scratch. Some people who maybe took a few lessons a while back and they want to get back into it. Some people who maybe did Al Kitab method, but they don't feel like they really know how to speak with native speakers. For a long time, I'd always shied away from teaching people Arabic because as you know, it's not my native language. And I feel like somebody maybe who's a native speaker would be a better teacher than me. But then I did learn it to a level where I'm able to speak fluently and read and write and act in Arabic TV series. I've co-hosted an Arabic talk show. I've done books in Arabic, uh, we have apps. So given all the things I've done in Arabic, maybe I'm actually a better candidate than I give myself credit for. So, yeah. That said, as many of you know from my interview with Phil, I learned Arabic, I mean the way that many, I would say the majority of non-native speakers learn Arabic is through the Al-Kitab method. The books that a lot of you love to hate, it's actually a series of three textbooks I believe, maybe more now, but three textbooks published by Georgetown University Press. Al-Kitab fi ta'lam al arabiya actually have all three right here. As you can see, they have barcodes. These are library books. My books are back in Dubai. It also comes with CDs. I believe with each textbook, you'll get like four or six CDs or something like that. So you can really practice listening and kind of like train your ear. For me personally, I think they're great as a foundation. You learn a lot of great phrases. You learn the grammar, you learn how to conjugate verbs. Every chapter has some Egyptian in it. My teacher, even though he is Egyptian, uh, he was teaching me MSA modern standard Arabic, which is Fusha, and so we skipped over that part, which may be another reason why we actually went through all three books um, pretty quickly. Also, I study very hard. My opinion of Al-Kitab method, right now it's probably one of the best curriculums out there, curricula. I think it's important to learn how to read and write. Just, It's just as important as learning how to speak. Honestly, I don't think I would be as fluent as I am today if I had not studied Fusha first and had I not learned how to read and write. Because when you're learning a local dialect, you'll find that the way they shorten words and the way that they they form the slang words, it's based in fusha. Usually, I mean, that's where the roots of the words come from. You know, you get the jadr in each word, right? Jadr, the root. The fusha is actually quite important. I don't think there's a better curriculum for fusha out there uh, as of now. Then again, looking back on my experience, how would I change it? And this is something that Phil mentioned as well. I would actually have more slang in the Al-Kitab method. Okay, case in point. Uh, in my first few months of learning Arabic, I would, you know, go to work at NBC and maybe say a few words to my colleagues, like sabah al khair, you know, good morning, things like that. I had a colleague, she said, um, kif al arabi, saab wala mob saab. I knew saab means difficult, so she said, how is Arabic? I never heard mob, what does mob mean? So in fusha, you say laysa, laysat for a feminine, to conjugate the feminine way, you say laysat saab. So I didn't know mob, and so I'm kind of like, huh? You know, and I felt, I was so frustrated because she was basically just asking me, how's Arabic? Is it difficult or is it not difficult? Like, is it hard or is it easy? I had no idea how to answer because I was kind of taken off guard. And as you can imagine, that's so frustrating, you know, because I've been waking up at 6 a.m. and studying two hours a day and then going to work full time and doing my homework at night. And how could I not understand a simple question from a native Arabic speaker? Because of that experience, I did this video to teach you a few words and phrases that that you won't get right away with Al-Kitab method and that might prove very useful for you when speaking to somebody in a more colloquial way. First, let's talk about who, what, where, when, why. The five W's, right? In Fusha, who, they say, I believe it's man, right? In Bil'amiya, in more slang, you would say mean. Mean means who, mean, mean da, who is that? What, ma. In formal Arabic, you say ma or you say ma da if it's with a verb. Instead of ma, you can say ish, means what? Or you can say shu, shu, shu baduk, what do you want? Ish masawi, what are you doing? Ish da, what is that? Ish. I speak more Saudi Arabic, so I say ish, but you can also say shu, or you can say wish, like wish da, also means ish, means what? Where? Aina, aina teskun, like where do you live? <laughs> um, you can say when, when, or you can say fein, fein al kitab, where is the book? When, when sahbi, where is my friend? So instead of Aina, you can say Wayne or Fain. When, Mitta. I actually still say Mitta because uh, I speak more Hijazi, Saudi. We say Mitta. When, but you can also say Emta. Emta, Emta al Hafla. When is the party? Emta. Why, Limada. You can say Leish. Leish. Leish Marucht. Why didn't you go? Other common words. So as I mentioned before, 
not. In Fosha, they say Lesa or Lesat. Lesat for something that's like feminine, conjugated. You can say um, Mish, and Mish Mopsulta, I'm not happy, Mish. But you can say Mob also means not. Or you can say Mu, Sab, Wala Mu Sab. Difficult or not difficult. So Mu, Mish, Mob. They all mean not, Lesa. Now. Now in Fosha is Al An. Now. In Amiya, I say Dahain because that's more Saudi dialect. But you can also say al -hain, I think is more Najdi, al -hain, or other I think Emiratis, they'll say al -hain, now. You can say Hella, which I think is more Shami, Hella, or Bilwati, Bilwati is Egyptian. My Egyptian is very, very weak, so yeah, Bilwati, you can say Hella, al -hain, or Dahain for now. Let's go now. Yalla, Dahain. The person which, or the thing that, Ashaks alladhi, the person who, you would say Ashaks illi, or the thing that, al kitab illi gretu ams, the book that I read yesterday. So you say illi, the person which, or the thing that, illi, ashaks illi, ashay illi, ashay illi shuftu ams, the thing that I saw yesterday. Those, in fusha, I believe to say those, like those things, you would say hawla, hawla, I don't use it anymore, but hawla, it means like those, you say hadol, hadoli. These, those, hadoli. This, hadha or hadhi, for this. I still use hadha, hadhi. You can also say um, that. Which that? What is this? Or the. That or the to mean hadha or hadhi. They also say dhalik. And I, I hear people, instead of saying dhalik, people say dhak. Dhak aliyom, which means dhalik. Also, when you're writing Arabic or and you're writing in slang, sometimes and what I do now is I write the letter ayn instead of ala. Hattu ala al kursi. Put it on the chair. Instead of ala, I just write the ayn, and people know what it means. So it's just like shortening the word. Put. I believe in fasad to say put something there. They use wada. They use the verb like wada or da. Put something. In slang, I just say hat. Okay, hatto, hatto hinak. Put the book down there. Hat al kitab hinak. Put it here. Hatto hina. Okay, here are some useful phrases that you can use, and they're very kind of slangy. Okay, so I don't feel like it. Nagul, Nagul means we say. I don't feel like it. Maliya nafs. Maliya nafs. Just I don't feel like it. What are you doing? In the fusha, I believe it's Mada ta'amal, Mada ta'amali to a girl. In slang, we say Ish masawi, Ish masawiya to a girl. Ish masawiya, what are you doing? Or Ish tasawi, Ish tasawi, what are you doing right now? You know, like as we speak, Ish tasawi. For al madi, to say like in the past tense, Soweto ams, I did it yesterday. Soweto, I did it. Or Soweta, if it's like a feminine. You know, you'd conjugate masculine and feminine, but yeah, Soweto, I did it. I want, so the verb I want, orit, as you know from Fosha, a lot of different ways to say I want, depending on the dialect, but I say abha, because that's the more Saudi, abha, or ishtabri, what do you want? I think in Egyptian they say aiz. Aizahaga, do you need something? Do you want something? Aizahaga, I would be like Tabrashe, do you want something? To a girl, Tabrashe, to a guy. You can say uh, also Abi, Abi Moya, I want water. They also say in Shami, they say Baddi, like Shubadduk, what do you want? Baddi means I want. So a few different ways to say I want. You can say Baddi or Shubadduk, Baddi is the more Shami way. You can say Tabra or Tabbi or Tabbi, yeah, Shutabi is more Khaliji. You can say eyes, which is more Egyptian. And also water. Like if I say I want water, I would say anabra moya. Moya to mean water. Instead of like ana orid, I think it's mat in fosha. People say mai, abi mai, water. I say moya. It's the easiest way for me to do it. But yeah, you can say mai. And thank you is shukran. Shukran lik. And you're welcome. Afwan. This is something I think you get from al kitab. Shukran lik. Thank you. Al afu. Yeah, instead of afwan, you can also say alafu. Instead of alafu, you can say something very nice. You can say, la shukr ala al wajib. Don't thank me for something, this is my duty. La shukr ala al wajib. And you know from, from Fosha, from your classes with that kitab that you have wajib, that means homework or duty. So yeah, la shukr ala al wajib. It's nothing. Thank you guys. Shukran alaikum. Ahabkum. Ahabkum. Oh, that's an interesting one I should teach you before I go. Ahabbuk could mean I love you or I like you. The ajabni means I liked it, okay? There's no confusion about that, ajabni. But just so you know, hope could also mean like, so like or love, FYI. But when I say ahabku, I mean I love you guys. Mar ahab al azraq, I love, I like blue, I love blue. Marra means a lot. In fusha, jiddan means a lot, right? Or kathir, a lot, kathir. 
You can say مرة حبيته مرة I really loved it مرة means a lot And you can also say I think in Emirati and I believe in Qatari as well they say وايد هي وايد صغيرة She's super young هي وايد شاطرة She's very smart وايد to mean a lot or too much Or no, too much is more like بزيادة But I would say وايد to mean like a lot وايد وايد حبيتك I loved you to a girl. So you can say instead of Jiddan, you can say Marra, which is more Saudi, Marra. Or you can say, I think in Egypt they say Awi, from Gawi. Gawi means strong, you say Awi means a lot. Awi, Awi. Or you can say Wayad, you can say Marra. Okay, so those are some basics. Uh, if you found this useful, please, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll get to them ASAP. See you guys soon. See you guys soon, Yanni. Bashufkum Gareeb. Yalla, bye.